What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and in today's episode of the Action RPG and Third Person Tutorial Series, we are going to be going over main quests, side quests, and other forms of quests. So basically we're going to be able to tag our quest as one of those categories, and it is going to change things about our game. Now in today's episode, we don't really have a quest flow. We have our basic quest system set up, but we can only spawn one quest at a time. Whereas in the future, we will have multiple quests that are able to be selected at a time. So for this case, what we're going to do is, depending on the type of quest that we are on, the text color is going to change. So you can see up in the top left, we are on a main quest. So our text color for the name of the quest, which is getting started, is white. If I go into my quest data table and I change my quest type, I can then display the name as a different color, like green, or I even have an alternative case to either of those, which I just called other, which is like a pink color. And so while it doesn't seem like much today, having the ability to change our quest type is going to be essential in the future to finish up our quest system. We have a lot to do with it, and this is something that's going to be very important and come into play in a lot of different ways. So that's what we'll be covering today. If you want to get caught up in the series and check out everything we've done before we get into the quest stuff, then feel free to click this icon in the top right corner right here. You can check it out and see everything we've done, how we made every single enemy, weapon, item, widget, all that good stuff in the series. Alternatively, you can click the link in the top right corner right here to go to the first episode of our quest system and just check that out if all you're interested is the quest. You won't have to finish the rest of the series to understand how the quest system works, so you can use it in any project that you like. With that said, we can go ahead and get started. So in today's episode, we're going to be dealing with the code and the blueprints. So I'm going to go into my code, and specifically, we want to start out in our base quest.h file. In the base quest.h file, I want to make a new enum that represents what type of quest we are on. So this is something we never had. Our quest and our base quest class holds all the data for each individual quest. We had things like rewards and clear conditions, such as defeating a number of enemies or collecting certain items, but we never had a way to distinguish what type of quest this was. And by quest type, I mean main quest, side quest, or other quest. So your main quest or your story quest is going to be a quest that is required for actual progression in the game. Your side quests are optional quests that, you know, may give you rewards or achievements or whatever, but you don't have to complete them to complete the game. And other can be used for whatever you want. You could use it as like a challenge. You could use it as a repeatable quest, or you could make more and more quest types. You don't only need to use these three. These are just the three I'm having as an example. We can always add more later. So to do this, I'm making a new UEnum that is blueprint type. That way we can access it in the blueprint. Then I'm calling it enum class eQuest type for enum quest type. Colon unsigned integer eight, which is written out as uint eight. And so it's very similar to our other enums if you see those and if you've used these before. For my actual enum values, I have e underscore main and for the display name, this is what we'll see when we're using it in data tables or the blueprint. And you saw that earlier when I was in my quest data table. My quest type here was main story quest, side quest, or other. Those are not the names of my enums. Those are the display names stored within these enum values. So I have main, which is main slash story quest, side, which is side quest, and other, which is just other. And now once we make this enum, we want to make sure that we have a variable associated with it. That way we can actually store the result of this enum on the quest itself. If you've been keeping up with the series, you'll know that we have two different methods here of storing variables. And one method is our fquest structure. This structure is a child of the f table row base structure. And the F table row base is what we use to create our data table. So we had to make this F quest structure to make it available for a data table. But 
if you're not using data tables, you don't have to use this method. So if you're using data tables like I do in the series, then simply put, I've added a new variable of our enum type, eQuest type, that I've called type to my FQuest structure. I made it U property of edit anywhere in Blueprint Read Write so we can access it in the blueprints, not just the code. If you're not using data tables, you can skip this part and just do what I'm about to show you next. So scrolling down to my variables in my actual base quest.h file, you can see that I have all the same variables that we had in the structure, and then some more. This specific base quest, or this quest instance, can hold all these details, and they should. But that structure above, the fquest structure, was something we set up so that we can set all of our quest data in these data tables and then pass that data along to the individual quest object. So I just want to make it clear, it is not required that you make this structure if you haven't already done so, but this is how I'm going to be doing it in the series and I'm just following along with the previous quest episode logic. So basically we're going to make an eQuest type type in our fQuest structure, but we're also going to make an eQuest type type on our actual base quest object as well. And that one is also you property edit anywhere blueprint read write to access it and use it in the blueprint. Once you have that done, we can go ahead into the base quest.cpp and we want to default our type in the constructor. So where we set all of our default values, we want to make sure that we set our type to be the default quest type. So e quest type colon colon e underscore main. That is my default quest type. We can go in to the editor. And specifically, if you are using the data table method like I am, you go to where your data table is and open it up. All the quests that you have set up already will still be here, but now they will have a new column called type. In this column, we want to make sure that each of our quests is using the appropriate quest type. So for now, you can set them to whatever values you want. If these aren't your actual quests that you're using in their game, and these are just placeholders like I have here, you can set them to whatever type. It really doesn't matter. But otherwise, if you have actual quests, feel free to start using them and tagging them as the appropriate value. So for my first one here, I've set my type to be main and story quest. For the second one, I've set the type to be a side quest. And for the third one, I've set it to be other. And I've also updated the description here for getting started part two to just say learn about side quests. These are just things that I have so that while we are going through our game, it kind of makes it a little bit easier to understand. So using my first quest, you have all this data here. If I update the current quest that plays when we start the game, you'll see it says learn about side quests. And then I can also use my third quest that I have in here, which will look like this. So there you go. Once you have all of your data in your data table set up, we're going to need to go to our quest info widget. So I have this widget called quest info, and it stores the name of our quest and the description of our quest. In here, I actually want to change the color of this text, again, just as an indicator, before we get into quest flow, where we can navigate between main quest and side quests, we're going to want to have some way to determine and make sure that this is working. So I'm going to go into my quest info widget, I'm going to go to the graph, and I'm going to make a new event that I call set quest name color. Before, in this widget, we were setting the quest name text and the quest description text. So now I'm going to make a new event, right click, add custom event, and you can name it whatever you want. I've called mine set quest name color. Once you get your event in here, click on it, and you can add input parameters. You might have to compile and save to do this. But at some point, you should see inputs with a little plus sign here. Once you have that, you can press this plus sign to make an input parameter. And these are things that we're going to pass into the function to then set other things in this graph. Specifically, what I want to do is pass in the type of the quest to this widget. 
That way the widget can display the information about the quests appropriately. And that's what we did for the name, and that's what we did for the description as well. So we're just doing a very similar method here to change the color of this text. This should already be a variable because we are able to set the text on it in the graph, but your quest name text will have to be a variable to do this next step. So if it isn't already, make sure you set that. And once we have that, make sure that our variable type is of our enum. So we want to go to our input parameter that we added and make sure it is of the enum type, which for me is e quest type. Now we can drag off of this parameter and bring it into a switch statement, which will allow us to handle every case for no matter what value the enum is, we will be able to do something with it. And again, we're keeping it simple. So I'm just going to grab my quest name text, get it, and I'm going to call set color and opacity. And at this point, we can pass in a color and opacity and the text will be updated to that. So once we have this node, we can right click on it and split the struct pin. Make sure you click on the in color and opacity part. And then you can actually pick a specific color. You could also make a color and pass it into this structure without splitting it if you wanted. So you could pass a slate color structure into this directly. But I find it easier to just split the struct pin because the other parameter in here, the in color and opacity color use rule, I'm just keeping a specified color for now. I don't need to change anything about it. So I find splitting it is easier because then you can click the little color box and get your color picker and pick whatever color you want. For me, for the main quest, I used white, which you can easily obtain by just dragging this box all the way down or by putting 1.0 in your RGB. However you want to handle that. Then I copied this and the quest name text two other times and pasted it. So the main and story quest goes into this one. This is my white color text. For side quest, I had that light green. So I did the same thing, but just use these colors right here. And then for other, I have a pink. So I did the same thing, but use these colors right here. And once we have this event set up, we are ready to go. We need to call this event and pass in the appropriate data to actually see any changes. So right now, all of our quest data is being brought along in the begin play of our game mode. So once the game mode loads up, it grabs the quest data and displays it to the screen. We will have a more professional flow in the future. So go to wherever your flow is for your quest, wherever you're setting the data for it. For me, it's the game mode BP begin play. We construct a quest and we grab the data from the data table. At this point, we break and get all the data from the quest of the data table. And we were calling a function called set quest details. Here we will want to pass along the type into this function, but you won't be able to because type isn't a parameter in that function yet. So go back into the code and go to your base quest.h. Scroll down to the function set quest details, which is where we set all the parameters for each individual quest. And for me, that is right here. In here, I've added a new parameter now, equest type underscore type. Doesn't matter where you put it in this list, but I just put it here because it made the most sense. Name description type, then the reward XP, then the reward item. So once you've added this parameter, We'll have to go and add it in the base quest.cpp as well. So here's my set quest details function. And I've also added the parameter in here. Now, this function is genuinely just meant to receive data from somewhere else, such as the data table, and set the variables for this specific instance of a quest. So you'll see all of my logic in here is just passing data along and setting it in this class based off what was passed in. We're going to do the same thing here. We're going to take the type variable that is part of the class. It's the one we set in the constructor. And we're going to set it equal to the type that is passed into this function. Once you do this, close Unreal, launch again, or build and compile, whatever you normally do to get your changes to the engine. 
And the next time you come in your base game of BP, you should see your set quest details function with another parameter. You may have to right click and refresh the node if you don't see it, but otherwise you'll see it right here. At this point, I just want to take the type that comes from the data table element and pass it directly into the type for the parameter of the function. And now the quest will know exactly what type it is. Going over a little bit more, we have a set of logic in this code where we were grabbing the name and the description of the quest element. Here's our current quest reference. And you can see there's a reroute node up above this blue line that we were grabbing the name and the description of, and we were calling set quest name text and set quest description text, the two events that we had in our quest info widget. Now we have another event in that widget, and that's our set quest name color. So we're going to call that here as well. Now, just by dragging off of the HUD reference quest info widget we have here, we'll be able to call the event set quest name color. But we'll need to make sure we pass the type as well. You can manually set it here, but that kind of defeats the purpose of the quest storing that data for us. So I'm going to go back to my reference. Remember, current quest reference is this blue line up here. And I'm going to drag off of it and get our type. This is the variable that we just set in set quest details. At this point, I can drag this directly into my set quest name color under the type parameter. And now once I do that, that widget will know what type the quest is that it's displaying information for. And so it can accurately change the text to represent the type of the quest that is currently active for the user. So now when we play our game, the text color will be representative of if we're doing a main or a story quest, a side quest, or some other quest. One other quick thing I wanted to fix up just from a previous episode is in our third person tutorial character.cpp. When we went over death and respawn, we had reset our player's health and armor values. However, in the respawn function, when we reset the armor values, we never reset our boolean has armor. We'll want to do that now because when we call the take damage function, we check to see if the player has any armor. And if they do, then we decrease the damage amount from the armor, not their health. So even though we've set the armor value, we do want to say that they have armor again, if we want them to have that armor when they respawn. If you don't, you can otherwise leave it alone, but that was something I meant to do and forgot. So just a quick fix to a small little bug from the previous episode. Anyway, guys, that's all I got for you in today's episode. So I hope you enjoyed and I hope this helped you with your quest system. If it did, please subscribe. It does more for myself in the series than anything else you can do. And it really allows me to keep working on this quest system and bettering it, which I love it. And I'm, I'm so happy to be working on it. I'm glad you guys are enjoying it. If you had any issues with this tutorial or any of my tutorials, feel free to join the Discord community. It is completely free, and I'd be happy to help you with any problems you ran into, so that way you can keep continuing on with the series. I also want to give a huge shout-out to my YouTube membership and Patreon members and supporters. Thank you guys for making this series possible. Really appreciate all your support and all of the great ideas that you guys give to me for what to work on next. Anyway, guys, that's all I got. Like I said, I'm Sean the Bro. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.